Echo Park in San Diego is now starting its third year as the home of the San Diego Padres after they moved from Jack Murphy later known as Qualcomm Stadium and there is Mike Piazza squatting behind home plate not wearing his familiar number 31. He has number 33 on his back now as a Padre and there is Jake Peavy the ace of the Padres staff on the mound tonight. Here's the Chevrolet Mets lineup that he'll face and you see Kaz Matsui he'll make his 2006 debut and if you'll recall Kaz hit a home run in his first at bat in the major leagues in 2004 and he hit a home run in his first at bat of the season in 2005. We'll see if he can get that unusual streak continued here tonight. And there's Jake Peavy the starter tonight for San Diego. Look at the strikeouts already. He's already got his strikeout pitches going. He struggled the first two outings. Lost a tough one against Smoltz in Atlanta. Sinker slider a real battler. And the Padres defense brought to you by Ford sets up with you see Khalil Green there highlighting. He's made two errors this already in this young season. Giles Johnson Roberts the veteran Roberts out in left in the outfield. Castilla Vinny Castilla the veteran at third Josh Barfield at second Adrian Gonzalez the young star and hitting well at first and Mike Piazza of course behind the plate and there's Khalil Green right there and Jose Reyes leads off for the Mets Reyes had a double in his last trip last night but just two for his last 20 hitting a 262 and PV misses with his first pitch Reyes is on base percentage down to 308 remember he had a 300 on base percentage last year and Got off to the fast start. And PV missing high 2 0. Reyes has been getting under the ball again. He started out so hot, hitting line drives, Gary, and ground balls. Now he's back to a little bit of his old ways, chasing bad sliders in the dirt and getting under the ball. Has a 2 0 advantage, and he takes a strike. Reyes, unique among the Mets, has good numbers against Jake PV as you look at Paul Duca on deck. PV's dominated the Mets for the most part. And Reyes takes ball three. C.B. Buckner not giving Peavy a call that he thought he should have had. Peavy last year won 13 games, but that does not indicate how well he pitched. As Reyes pops one up foul, he missed a couple of starts along the way. Led the league in strikeouts nonetheless, 216 strikeouts in 203 innings. And then, just to give you an idea about his toughness, during the Padres celebration clinching their National League West title somebody somehow managed to break his rib as Reyes fights one off and yet Peavy took the mound in game one of the National League Division Series against the Cardinals with a broken rib and managed to at least fight his way through that game wound up pitching four to third innings before he finally gave way. 3 2 to Reyes and he fouls it back and Reyes with a long opening at bat. Well he's trying to work a walk here and it's hard to walk Jose although he has managed to get a few more walks this season early in the year. Still under the ball he should always try to hit the top half of the ball. And again he fouls it off so he's seen eight pitches in this opening at bat and you can the defense is playing Reyes more as an opposite field hitter than we normally see. Well, you know, I would do that too. They're, that, that tells me they're not going to, they got a power pitcher here, not with an off speed pitch. It's just going to be hard sinker, hard slider. So they're going to shade and pitch him away and play him away. Again on three and two, and again, Reyes fouls it off, and he's now seen nine pitches in the opening at bat, and if nothing else, making PV work to start the game. Billy Randolph, who's stressed on base percentage to this ball club as a whole, has been a bit dismayed at the fact that the Mets right now are last in the National League in team on base percentage. At 325. And he fouls another one off, and that's 10 pitches and still going in the opening at bat of the game. Well, I tell you what, Gary, I'm, not, I'm being serious. Those Florida Marlin pitching staff outside of Dontrell Willis, and you see the grip on the ball. And Washington's bullpen, I wouldn't want to walk neither. I want to take my hacks. Again on three and two, and this one Reyes puts in play, shallow left field. And Dave Roberts right there went away. So Reyes has an 11 pitch opening at bat. That's the good news. Bad news is he flies out and he's now two for his last 21. And again, uh, that hole at bat, he never made a correction to get on top. How do you work on it? You work on it in batting practice. I know when I was a line drive hitter, 
I was schooled by my dad to concentrate on the top half of the ball, hitting the top half of the ball. And that really, it does work. It makes you focus on the top half to get on top. And Loduka takes a strike, and particularly when you're as fast as Reyes, you, you never want to be hitting the ball in the air. If Jose gets in a hot streak and gets hits, has a great year, he's not going to, he's not a 20 home run guy. He's going to hit your 15 home runs. He's going to get stronger. He's got to get on base. Loduka fouls went off 0 2. Paul Loduka hitting a 357, had the day off yesterday. Mets three times in the last week had day games after night games, and Loduka sat all three. And remember, he just turned 34 years old, so. Well, he's going to do that most of the year. As you look at Carlos Beltran, who missed the last four games with a hamstring injury, didn't pronounce himself in the lineup till about 45 minutes before the game tonight. One and two, the count to Leduca. The Mets is certainly a different ball club with Beltran and Cliff Floyd back in the lineup. However, that being said, Atlanta had the same amount of people hurt too, and the same important guys in that lineup. So it was it was equal going in. It was just really a, a fun series to watch. Is Cliff Floyd coming back from a rib cage pull tonight? And Loduca skies it to shallow left. Green called off by Roberts and two fly balls to the left fielder. And Jake Peavy has the first two Mets out. So two out and nobody on. Well, here's Beltron. Carlos sitting at 273, three home runs, nine RBIs. He's had just one hit in 10 at bats in his career against Peavy. The Mets finally beat Peavy last summer at Shea. As Beltron hits one to center field, and right there is Ben Johnson. And so on three fly balls, Jake Peavy gets the Mets on one, two, three in the opening inning. Nothing across. We go to the bottom of the first. Steve Traxel on the mound. Tomorrow, the Mets continue their series with the Padres as rookie Brian Bannister takes the hill. Baseball Night in New York, presented by ChevyOffers.com, delivers all the action. Mets, Padres, coverage begins tomorrow at 9.30 on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. Petco Park in San Diego. Steve Traxel takes the mound for the Mets for his third start of the season. Here's the Rico Padres lineup that he'll face. Josh Barfield, the rookie second baseman. You see Mike Piazza hitting cleanup these days for the Padres. Vinny Castillo off to a good start at age 38. And ben Johnson, the young center fielder, whom the Padres are very high on. So a pretty young lineup facing Traxel tonight, with the exception of Piazza and Castillo. And Steve Traxel gets the ball again, his third start of the season, off, off a rough outing at, at home his last time out. Remember that last outing was on seven days of rest. Here he pitches on his regular fifth day as Dave Roberts leads off and takes a strike. Traxel very much a creature of habit. We'll see if he fares better here pitching on his normal day. Six and eight lifetime against the Padres and 16 starts. You know, Remember what Ronnie said uh, that when he had too much rest he always got it was too strong and got inevitably got shelled so he's back on his routine back on his fifth day right creeping in on the grass at third against Roberts who punches one foul you mentioned that Traxel six and eight lifetime against the Padres he probably had in retrospect the most important start of his career against San Diego in his first year as a Met in 2001 he had a horrible day against the Padres at Shea he gave up four home runs and after that start wound up accepting an assignment to the minor leagues. As Roberts lines one the other way toward the left field corner and that is a foul ball. So Roberts who was around first will come on back. And when Traxel went down to the minor leagues everything changed for him for the better. And there you see a better angle that first shot you folks back home that's the view we have we get blinded there just like you did on that shot we couldn't see where the ball landed but our director Mr. Webb came back with the other angle for us. Thank you Billy. Was there not a bit of chalk dust involved in where that ball fell? Nice to know Webby's in a wake down. There. Well, it's the first West Coast game of the year. You know the time change and everything. <laughs> Some folks need to. I feel great. Get a little nap in. Let's play two. <laughs> one and two to Roberts. And Traxel bounces one, two and two. Well, here the Mets played on the East Coast yesterday. As you look at Mike Piazza, and they come west. 
for a road trip with no day off. It's got to have take some toll on your body. It's more difficult going back. And Roberts drives one toward the right field corner and he's got himself an extra base hit. Roberts who can still fly will try for three. Matsui with the relay throw and it bounces off the glove of right. It's a triple for Dave Roberts leading off the bottom of the first. And for Roberts that's already his third triple of the year. Well fastball inside here and it is inside he just turned on it. Hits a rocket down the right field line. And this is a ball club with a lot of guys that have a lot of triples. It's a big park. You see he can still run as you said Gary. Only a perfect throw from Matsui would have got him. It would have beat him. But just a little bit off the off the up the line. Tailed into left field just a little bit. It would have been a close play if it was right on the bag. Dave Roberts just shy of his 34th birthday. So he's a third with nobody out. The Mets will play the infield back to concede a run. And here's the rookie second baseman, Josh Barfield. And he's off to a good start. And he takes a curveball for ball one. Barfield, the son of former Blue Jays and Yankees outfielder Jesse Barfield. Jesse was a home run hitting outfielder with a great arm. Josh is a little guy, but he's off to a fast start hitting at 300 on the year. Now he's six feet, 190 pounds. 23 years old, he'll get bigger. Uh, Traxel gets even at one and one. There you see what the rookie crop is doing that Hanley Ramirez, whom we saw at the beginning of the season, he has been very impressive, the shortstop for the Marlins. The Marlins got three guys in that group. Well, they've got more rookies than anybody else. I hear you. <laughs> His strength in numbers. And Barfield fouls went off one and two. And as I've always said, a pitcher like Traxel gives a young hitter fits. Young hitters are so fixed on hitting a fastball. If you look at Brian Giles, number three hitter for, for San Diego, they're so fixed on hitting a fastball. And Traxel's a guy that can throw you the kitchen sink in any count. Traxel ahead one and two with a runner at third and nobody out. And he throws the splitter and strikes out Barfield. No tag made. Laduca checks the runner and makes the throw to first. And there's the first out for Traxel. So one away, and it'll bring up Brian Giles. Well, not even getting a fastball to hold it back. It's the hard split finger down the dirt. Starts out knee high and breaks out of the strike zone. And there's another guy that drives young hitters crazy, particularly rookies. It's always those control pitchers with good off speed pitchers. Here's Brian Giles who's not going to swing at too many pitches out of the strike zone. He walked 119 times last year. And he's already walked 15 times this year hitting a 289. Giles re-upping with the Padres during the offseason. He was a free agent. And he takes Lowen away. He had a huge offer of something like five years and 55 million dollars to go to the American League. But decided to stay here for less money and fewer years. Giles grew up in San Diego and he's thrilled to be a Padre. And Traxel misses low 2 0. Now this is one of those interesting situations. You got Giles, a guy who's not going to chase, and you got Piazza on deck who's struggling and is a double play candidate. Well, Mike, of course, never a great runner uh, early in his prime, but still very dangerous maneuver here. Oh, good curve. He gets a strike to Giles, but throwing the 2 0 breaking ball. This is the goodest curveball I've ever seen Traxel throw. That's just got some bite to it. He threw it harder. Usually he throws a little more, a little less velocity. That was a hard curve. Yeah, it's 3 1 to Giles. As a hitter, when I was in this situation, I always looked covered the plate away and were able to inside out a fastball. All that's needed here is a fly ball early in the game to get a, a run up. You're not giving yourself up for a fly ball. And it's always easier up here than it is down there. That's for sure. On three and one, Giles lines one in the right center field and that'll get the Padres on the board as Roberts trots home with the first run of the game. Ryan Giles with his fifth run batted end of the season. The Padres out to a one nothing first inning lead. Well, he did better than a sacrifice fly. Got himself an RBI single. So here's Piazza. 
And Mike admitted that he's a little bit nervous tonight. He said he'll be a lot more nervous when he returns to shape in August when the Padres make their lone trip of the season. It'll be very interesting to see how Traxler works, Mike. They're all they're both very familiar with each other. It's the first time the Mets have played against Mike Piazza since the 1997 season when he was a Dodger. Mike fouls the first one back. Piazza hit his 398th home run in his first at bat of the season. But he hasn't had one since. You see Mike Ray number 33. Number 31 here in San Diego is retired. That was Dave Winfield's number during his Hall of Fame career. Pretty good player right there, Dave Winfield. A pretty good one right here. So it's the first time since Mike's rookie season with the Dodgers that he's worn anything other than 31. Remember when he came to the Mets, John Franco had 31, but agreed to give it up for Piazza. And there you see. Winfield's 31 among the retired numbers next to Randy Jones is 35 to third should be two right to Matsui who makes the easy turn five four three double play and Traxel's through the inning so Piazza bangs into the double play in his first at bat but the Padres get a run on two hits we go to the second one nothing San Diego. Yorkers love a good debate, and Daily News Live will be the place to find one five days a week on Sportsnet New York. Join media experts and personalities as they gather around the table for fast-paced New York sports talk. Daily News Live, weekdays at 5 p.m. on Sportsnet New York. The Mets game on Sportsnet New York. It's Baseball Night in New York, presented by ChevyOffers.com. From the pregame show to the postgame show and every pitch in between, Sportsnet New York gives you all the highlights, interviews, and the inside scoop. And from our studio, we'll catch you up with news, scores, and highlights from all around the league. Now you won't miss a single big play. Because every night the Mets are on, it's Baseball Night in New York, presented by ChevyOffers.com, only on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. Sports Night, the news and information source for all New York area sports fans. Sports Night won't just report the news, it'll break the news. 6 p.m., 10 p.m., and 1 a.m. every night, only on Sportsnet New York. Here's Dave Winfield. We were just talking about Dave and his retired number 31. Here's Carlos Delgado lifting one to center field. And on one pitch. Jake Peavy has the first down as Ben Johnson makes the grab. So four mid hitters, four fly ball outs. And pretty much first ball hitting. This is a game right here where you can come out flat. Even though it's much more difficult to fly west coast to east coast, the time change is much more difficult to adjust to than coming out west. But still, we had a long flight last night, obviously. We got in around 9 o'clock, 8.30. Um, you're still on New York time. You're waking up at 6 o'clock or whatever, whatever your norm is. It's three hours earlier. And it's a day where you can come flat. You've really got to kick it here. David Wright takes a strike. And David's struggling right now. 0 for his last 11. Uh, and, you're, and you're at a time right now where the team has been struggling the last couple of days. And you're facing a top flight starter. One and one the count to Wright. I, mean, I woke up this morning at 545. I wasn't very happy about that. How you feeling now? Was a, oh, I took a nap. <laughs> I worked out and took a nap. There's a lot of that going on. Right bounces one foul. You know, just, just to give you an idea about what the Mets have done the last two days, getting just one run and three hits, in the last 10 years, there's only been one other set of games in which the Mets had less than two runs and less than four hits in back to back games, and that was in 1999. To give you an idea how rare that is. Two and two the count to right and they've never had three straight games where they've had less than two runs and less than four hits. Cliff Floyd waiting on deck. But Peavy's a guy who can keep you in a slump. And right fouls it um, When I worked out this morning, no, it wasn't this morning, it was around 11 o'clock. Carlos Delgado was in the was in the gym in the hotel working out with his trainer did aerobics on, on the bike and then did went right into a few weights lightweights and it was swimming 
Wright hits one the other way toward the right field corner. Over goes Giles, but it bounces up against the wall. Right to second, and he's in with a leadoff double, with a one-out double. So David Wright, after going hitless in 11 at bats, has the Mets' first hit of the game, his fourth double of the year. Well, Jake Peavy did not read the scouting report, or didn't pay attention to it. Piazza set up outside. Two strikes on David Wright. You've got to pound in, and that ball was up. He's a sinker ball pitcher. And he got it up. It stays flat. And David's good hitting on David's part. So the Mets have the tying run at second with one out. And here's Cliff Floyd. And Cliff pretty much knew when he got to the ballpark today that he was going to play. He had a little batting practice session in the cage just to make sure. And then declared himself fit. Coming back from a couple of days on the sidelines with a strained rib cage. And he hits one foul. It was a, much of that flight was a long flight last night. It's, it's always nice to fly charter. And I remember the days early in my career, as you see Xavier Nady's bat, we used to fly commercial. And when you flew commercial, you were always subject then to delays, planes coming in from another city. And, you know, if you had to get to a town, it was sometimes where you were at the airport late at night and certain things happened. And these owners finally said, we better get charters <laughs> or we get too many complaints. Nothing to the count. Well, there's no question that, that travel takes its toll on professional athletes. But it, it it bears being said that professional athletes don't travel like regular civilians. They're in, and they're young and they're in shape too. And I tell you what, the food on the planes that that the, the, the fly Delta is uh, just phenomenal. They have more than a few courses, around three entrees to pick from, and that's the way it should be. I mean, you don't have a time to eat after a ball game on getaway day. You want to keep your players fed. You got a five five and a half hour flight, and you land like that in this city, one of the most dangerous cities in the country to land in. The airport's right downtown in San Diego. It is just you. You can almost look out the window and look down and touch the ceiling, the, the roofs of the buildings. You don't want, and it's very eerie when you fly in with fog. It's never foggy in San Diego. On the beach it is. <laughs> two and two to Floyd. It's foggy in the morning. Yes. They've had quite a bit of rain here in California, as you're probably aware, over the last month, far more than normal. But uh, it's back to regular San Diego weather. Temperature was right around 70 today. You see that beautiful sky above. It was beautiful. Beautiful day. Two and two the count to Floyd. Hitting an even 200 on the year. Trying to pick up right from second with one out. And he bounces one down to first. Gonzalez to the pitcher covering, and there are two away. Right moves over to third. And now Xavier Nady comes in. Let's see what kind of reaction Nady gets in his return to San Diego. What a nice flight one. Very Southern California like. Oh, well, we were talking about this on the on the open today. It was so funny because you know Nady arrived here and you know the PR people started scrambling around oh we have to have some kind of media event for Nady in his return to San Diego. I you know Nady was a well liked guy here. In fact he was very good friends with the guy he's facing right now Jake Peavy. But the media event consisted of two San Diego sports writers talking to Nady in the dugout and contrast that with Piazza who had a horde of dozens of reporters talking to him. One and one the count to Nady. Well you see Peavy right now has got his pitches up and he's a sinker ball pitcher you can tell at home you can watch from that camera behind center field he gets up it stays flat when he gets it down it'll sink he can't pitch from the belt up that's where he has to be but that had a lot of plate one and two now to Nady with Kaz Matsui on deck Nady hitting a 373, sixth in the National League. He's also eighth in the league in slugging percentage. Tying run at third and two out. And it's two and two to Nady. Nady getting his first chance to play full time. Bruce Bochy certainly liked Nady, but never played him on a full time basis here in San Diego they've moved him around left field right field first base third base. I thought this was a good trade for the Mets You're getting a younger player in Nady at 25 Mike Cameron did a terrific job for the Mets but he's in his 30s 
And nady has got a world of talent, and this is an opportunity for him. And he's taken advantage so far. It's early. He's done terrific. But he's got a world of talent. Padres are hoping Cameron can play before the end of this series. Here's the 3 2 to Nady. Swings it a pitch out of the strike zone, and PB has his first strikeout. So a double by right and one left. We go to the bottom of the second. As you look at the USS Midway, it's 1 0 San Diego. As soon as the Mets are done on the field, Sportsnet New York is still in the game with Nissan Post Game Live. All the stats, highlights, expert analysis. Hear from the players and coaches after every Mets game. It's Nissan Post Game Live on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. Not too close. What do you think? I got that insurance? What insurance is that, Yogi? I'm like... The one you really need to have. If you don't have it, that's why you need it. Need what? I fly. Well, if you get hurt and miss work, it won't hurt to miss work. Uh -huh. And they give you cash, which is just as good as money. Aflac. Ask about it at work. We go to the bottom of the second inning, one nothing San Diego. Steve Traxel facing the Padres and Adrian Gonzalez, and he takes inside one no. Gonzalez at one time the number one overall pick in the draft that was in 2000 he grew up here in San Diego he moved from the Marlins to the Rangers and now to the Padres after a wintertime deal and Traxel gets even one and one and Gonzalez is a kid with a great swing and there's the old splitter right to the glove that's exactly where Traxel would love to throw it every time if he could. Two and one the count to Gonzalez. With Khalil Green waiting on deck. The Padres last year, the National League West champions with the worst record ever for a division champion. Hit right at Reyes. And Gonzalez retired one away. Reyes didn't have to move an inch, prompting the big smile. Didn't take much to get Reyes to smile. He's very happy. <laughs> Here's the message <laughs> defense for you. David Wright, of course, made three errors yesterday. He tied a Met record. Oh, Roberto, Roberto Alomar made three errors back in 2002. Floyd Beltran back in the lineup. Nadian Wright. Matsui at second. Being called up. Delgado Reyes at short. And Laduca back behind the plate. There's Khalil Green taking outside. Well, if there's any ballpark that should get David Wright's glove well, it should be this ballpark because here last year he made one of the phenomenal plays that we've ever seen. One and one to Green. Of course, it had nothing to do with his glove. He caught the ball with his bare hand. I remember. This is such a beautiful park. It's so well manicured. One and two, the count to Green. An old Jack Murphy Stadium was so beautiful uh, when it was open like this park before they enclosed it so they can get a Super Bowl in there. It's in there for a call strike three. Green goes down looking, and Traxel has his second strikeout. Well, he set him up here. I always said, you take a third call, third strike fastball, you're set up by the pitcher. And Traxel threw split fingers and curves, and Green got ahead, struck him out with a fastball on the outside corner. Had, had Green thinking, breaking ball, or splitter. Well, here's Vinny Castilla. Vinny keeps rolling along. It's like Old Man River. He's 38 years old now. And he's uh, off to a pretty good start, hitting a 333 with a homer and seven RBIs. Padres have not been scoring much, and it's one of the reasons why they're six and eight to start the year. And Traxel starts him off with a breaking ball. I must say that Traxel has a very outstanding curveball early today, and I've never seen him throw it so hard. It's got because he's throwing it harder; it has more bite. There it is again, and he gets the comebacker from Castilla. Makes the easy play, and he has himself a 1 2 3 inning. So we've played two now in San Diego. The Padres up one to nothing as Traxel gets the Padres 1 2 3. Be a part of the amazing Mets action at Shea this season. Visit Mets.com or call 718 507 TIXX for your tickets. The team, the time, the Mets. 
The New York Jets are on the clock and ready to select their 2006 rookie class. It's time to gear up for the Jets draft day party on Saturday, April 29th at 1130 at Dave & Buster's in Farmingdale, the Hard Rock Cafe in Times Square, and the Fox & Hound in the Menlo Park Mall. Meet players, win prizes, watch the draft unfold. Log on to NewYorkJets.com and enter for a chance to win one of over a thousand draft prizes. The 2006 season kicks off at the Jets draft party on Saturday, April 29th at 1130. The season may be over, but the sun never sets on Jets Nation. And it can only be found on the new year-round TV home of the Jets, Sportsnet New York. Every week during the offseason, join us for your connection to everything Jets. You'll get the inside news and updates on the players, exclusive interviews and insight with the coaches, and a look at all the wheeling and dealing. Everything you need to know as the New York Jets gear up for another season of Gang Green Football. Jets Nation, new episode Saturdays at 11 on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. We go to the third inning here at Petco Park in San Diego and Kaz Matsui has his first at bat of the season. That's usually a good thing. And he takes a changeup from Jake Peavy for ball one. <laughs> He's had a great success his first at bat. He certainly has. Each of his first two years in the big leagues had a home run in his first at bat. In fact in 2004 he was the leadoff hitter for the Mets in Atlanta and the first pitch he saw in the big leagues the first pitch of the season he hit over the center field fence off Russ Ortiz. Two and one to Matsui and then last year in Cincinnati his first at bat of the season he was batting second he hit a home run off Paul Wilson. So here's his first at bat of 06 and he drives one to deep right field back goes Giles back near the wall he reaches up he can't get it it's an extra base hit Matsui will easily make third he might go all the way it's picked up by the center fielder Johnson and played in here's Barfield's relay throw to the plate thrown home by Gonzalez not in time it's an inside the park home run Matsui does it again <laughs> three straight years a home run in his first at bat of the year this one inside the park and it ties the game at one and one Unbelievable. I, I don't believe it. Welcome back. <laughs> Where you been? <laughs> My goodness. Well, I, I'm, I'm left with almost nothing to say. Well, what a way to come back. Fastball right down the pipe. Giles almost makes the play here. Crashes into the wall. There's they're just bounce that, that weird angle of the wall out there. The ball bounces away from the both fielders. Double relay from Johnson to Barfield to Gonzalez to Piazza, and they couldn't get him. And now the comeback were off PV, and he throws out Traxel, and, and PV appears to be all right. Well, here's the play at the plate here. He just got his foot in there. Mike blocking the plate there. Mike Piazza. If he didn't catch the ball, but where was Piazza? Because he was off to the left of home plate and got there late. Well, we're going to watch Matsui here. Now, this is a long way to run now. There remember, he is. remember, he's coming off a knee injury, too. He had a sprained medial collateral ligament in his knee. That's what kept him on the sidelines for a month. And you think he's happy to be back? Look at that smile. That is just incredible. Here's Reyes taken outside. Well, Daryl Strawberry, two straight years at a homer in his first at bat in 87 and 88. 188 was memorable. That was the one in, uh, in Montreal that, that went off the, the ring of the stadium. As Reyes lifts one to left. And Roberts makes the play for the second out. But Matsui doing it three straight years. I don't know if anybody's ever done that. Well, here's the play at the plate again. And Piazza blocking it right in front. Matsui got his got his foot in there he would have been safe but that is just amazing <laughs> it really is you know the way this outfield is configured you get a lot of odd bounces off that fence and that ball after Giles crashed into the wall it just hugged the fence all the way towards center field and that's what made the play possible and no matter what kind of conditioning you do all the sprints you can you can come in great shape <laughs> baseball players aren't conditioned for inside the bar park home runs they're just not conditioned Here's the play at the plate again. Was it? Is it 90 feet the, per, the first base? It's 30, what, 30 yards? And there's some concern now for Jake Peavy. Remember, he knocked down that ground ball hit by Traxel, and I'm not sure exactly where it got him, but apparently he's feeling some ill effects. And the trainer and the manager, Bruce Bochy, are back out there. 
Well, you know, all inside the park home runs are memorable in their own way. The last inside the park home run the Mets had was Marlon Anderson's last summer against the Angels, and that one was memorable for the fact that it tied up the game in the bottom of the ninth inning. Ball that Steve Finley kicked from center field over toward the right field corner. But I don't think, what can you do that would be more memorable than what Matsui just did? There's the ball that hit. It looks like he got him on the ankle. Trainer's back in the dugout, and Peavy will continue and misses outside to Laduca 2 0. But it's 90, if you think about it, it's 90 feet to first base. It was 30 yards. It's over a 100 yard dash on an inside the park home run. With three left turns. Two and one to Laduca. And that'll tire anybody out. <laughs> well, by the time you, you run it, you, you can't cut the bases perfectly. It's probably a little more mm -hmm. than, than 120 yards. Two and one to Laduca, and he takes it wide, and so PV behind in the count three and one. Well, wait till next year and see what Matsui can do for an encore in his first at bat. What he can hope for now is that it's the uh, the start of something big. And you talked about it before, Matsui's nine lives. I mean, he came to the Mets as a tremendously hyped player as a shortstop from Japan and didn't play well at short. And was moved to second last year and then was hurt quite a bit and you know, who knows he's only 30 years old and you hope that maybe he will be what he was presented as when the Mets first signed him. Well all the guys that went over when they played the, uh, when the teams went over to play Japan Dusty Baker in particular went over was manager of the Giants then he told me he was the Matsui was the most impressive player over there and he could not believe his tr his struggles here. He thought it was it, it was a great move by New York to get this man and it just hasn't worked out. And certainly other teams wanted him as well. Up the middle Khalil Green throws out Laduka and the inning is over. But the inside the park home run by Kaz Matsui who homers in his first at bat of the season for the third straight year. Rounded the bases he says and the game is even at one. Honor of the 20th anniversary of the 86 World Series, Sportsnet New York delivers a series of classic games from that magical Mets season and a trip down championship lane. And the Mets win it! Mets Classics on Sportsnet New York. My friendship is for sale. Critics across America are raving. Lucky number Slevin is riveting. Four stars, the best thriller of the year. If he wants a war, I'll give him a war. Lucky number Slevin. Rated R. Now playing. Hey, Mets fans always traveling and missing games. Watch Mets games live online whenever you're away from New York, exclusively from MLB.tv. Mets.com has more live games than anyone else. Mets.com, where baseball is always on. Steve Traxel has retired four in a row after giving up a run in the opening inning. Ben Johnson leads off for the Padres and he takes a strike. Johnson's been playing center field the last four or five days for San Diego. Mike Cameron began a rehab assignment tonight for the Padres. He has yet to play. One and one to Johnson. Cameron strained an oblique muscle right at the end of spring training. And his hope is to be in the lineup by Saturday night. And some Padres playing four in this series. Dave Roberts played most of the center field the first two weeks. But now Johnson getting a crack at it. Two and one the count. Well, Johnson last year was a call late call up, hit 213 in 31 games for the Padres. Hit 312 in AAA Portland. Curveball by Traxel fouled off. Two and two. And the Padres are very high on Johnson. He's a kid who was a big football star in high school in Tennessee. In fact, he was considered the best athlete in that state. And he said. He would have played NFL football if he was good enough, but he was just a better baseball player, and so he followed that path instead. Three and two now to Johnson. Traxel's walked only two batters in 13 innings to start the season, and it's still three and two. Talking to Mike Piazza today about playing in San Diego, and he said, "You know, people here are so laid back, and they 
they just don't have the passion that people have in New York and that you know that stands to reason you expect that as Johnson singles the other way and it's a lead off base run for the Padres he said that when the Padres were home to start the season that they lost three games in a row to Colorado as we look at Kaz Matsui circling the bases well this is your what 130 yard dash here you start gassing right here trust me I hit one in St. Louis inside the park. Those last few steps were tough. <laughs> I almost didn't make it, and I was a young man. I was like 23 when I hit it inside the park. I'm 24. Yeah, here's PV in a sacrifice situ situation. As Traxler throws over. Anyway, they, they lost three straight games to Colorado here at Petco Park, and the Rockies scored double digits in all three games. And Mike said from the fans to the media to the front office the attitude was eh. I mean that's basically what he said he said eh. let's go to the beach he said if that were in New York can you imagine the panic can you imagine the back pages want to know the count to PV and he said you know there's something good about that but you also you, New York energizes you you, you, you wonder whether it's as easy to win in an environment where there isn't as much passion as it is in an environment where there is. Well, I like the excitement. The fans can energize a player, and certainly New York was like a 20, uh, 26 man for us in the 25 man roster. Those were such a such electric atmosphere at Shea. It just got you fired up to play, and I would certainly prefer to play in that environment uh, that being said I wouldn't have mind playing played here my entire career with this beautiful weather and uh, the California uh, I, I would not have mind being a Dodger or or a Padre and I'm not saying I'm, I'm happy where I wound up in St. Louis and New York but this is not a tough pill to take right here TV with the butcher boy Reyes runs it down, makes the play to first in time. Nicely done by Reyes. That was not an easy play at all. As PB faked the bunt, ran the butcher boy, and Reyes made a nice play to throw him out. Well, smart play by PB because look at David Wright, right down his throat, and he does the right thing here. He needed to pull it a little more. Easier said than done, but Reyes, very nicely done. So no sacrifice by PB on the score sheet, but it has the same effect. And a runner in scoring position with one out. I guess the question is, does it take anything out of you as a player to play in an environment that's less energized? Well, that's a good question. Do you think it would have taken anything out of Pete Rose to have played here? I don't think so. But, I, but, I think but, but not everybody's Pete Rose. I understand. And we're talking about the one person at the top of the scale. Right. He was going to be energized wherever he played. But what about your average major league player? Well, I think... Well, you know, I can only speak for myself. There are some guys that are laid back that can get caught up in this kind of smooth atmosphere here. And there's those that can play here and overcome it. I mean, you kind of you kind of played in in what would be the the in between, which is St. Louis, where there's the passion without the panic. I guess that would be the best way. To play. Yes, they are great fans there. They're loyal Cardinal fans. But the papers are pretty much provincial and write the company line there, not like New York. There's nothing like Boston, Philly, and New York as far as the press is concerned. You look at Mike, and I see I hit I see my inside the park home run was in 1977 <laughs> off Dick Ruthven. Was that a brave? And where was that? Was that it in, was in Bush Stadium. In Bush I hit State. a I hit a line drive dead center field that hit Four the 14. Hit the top, the concrete above the padding, and it, the center fielder was Claudel Washington, I believe. And it, or, and it bounced back and rolled all the way back into the infield. And you were motoring. I was motoring. Do we have video of that? I, I need to see the video of this. I would <laughs> love. <laughs> you, would, you would love my slide head first at home. Our producer, Greg Picker, just told us that the video's in Cooperstown. <laughs> and I'll get there somehow. <laughs> Through hook or crook. One of these days. Two and one to Roberts. And he lays off the splitter and it's three and one. We're in the bottom of the third inning, the Mets and Padres tied one to one. Roberts tripled leading off the first inning and then scored on a one out single by Brian Giles. The Mets tied it up on Kaz Matsui's annual first at bat of the year home run. This one coming inside the park.
three and one to Roberts. Yeah, there's a fastball for a strike three and two. You know, my experience is with when I came to New York, and it's a little unsettling to come to New York. New York wasn't a, my stupidity. Um, I, New York wasn't one of my favorite towns when I was a Cardinal. And there is a whole different. I came when the club was down with no great expectations. But other guys that got traded in when there was expectations. Curveball lined over Matsui's head and into right center field. Around third comes Johnson heading home. The throw by Nady is well up the line. Down to second Roberts. Throw by Leduc and not in time. And the Padres have a two to one lead. Well, good hitting by Roberts. The curveball that stayed in the middle, but it was down and it loops it over to Matsui's head. Now watch Nady here. Comes up looking. Didn't have much, any chance to throw out the runner. And if he is going to throw home, he has to hit the cutoff man. He was not only over the cutoff man, he was wide of the cutoff man, and the throw was up the line. I think he got caught in between here, and that's good base running right there. Take your turn hard, read the throw, and you should be on second base. And this is the second time that he's done that. And you've just got to think ahead. A soft line drive like that with a fast runner on second base, you're not going to throw him out. I wonder whether Nady a little over exuberant coming back to his old stomping grounds as Traxel looks in on Roberts who's certainly known for his base running. Roberts stole the most famous base in Boston Red Sox history. Boy didn't he. To the to the glee of many a Met fan. Pinch runner in the ninth inning of game four with the Red Sox about to get swept. Stole the base scored the tying run Red Sox won four in a row and made history and you know. Roberts gets a lot of the credit for energizing the Red Sox. He obviously didn't do it all, but his was the first piece in that incredible puzzle. And Pedro was more than a small piece in that. One to one to Barfield. You know, but getting back to the thought about people getting traded to a to New York team with expectations. Howard Johnson comes to mind. Howard was it took Howard a while to acclimate and Howard didn't get a chance when he first came didn't play every day Ray Knight was basically the starting third baseman and there's another example Ray Knight a veteran a competitor came over and New York had no effect on Ray Knight he thrived in that New York environment Howard Johnson of course came over from the Tigers but he was still a very young player was, at that yes time. exactly and Ray Knight was a veteran and Ray Knight to me did one of the great things in baseball he had to replace Pete Rose at third base mm -hmm. and he had a great year that that year when he played when Pete Rose was traded on one and one Barfield takes it outside two and one Josh Barfield wearing number twenty nine which was his dad's number and uh, when he first found out he made the Padres team was not going to wear twenty nine and then he decided what the heck. It's assigned him 14. He asked for 29, and he said his father has never smiled more. To right field, and Nady has this one, and Roberts will fake the go. And again, Nady overthrows the cutoff man, but throws it on target to third. And Roberts holds up. Well, we talked before in the last homestand. Ron Darling don't take infield anymore. Outfielders don't get to warm up. They get a warm up. They don't get to practice their throws and hitting the cutoff man. Now this is interesting just from a psychological standpoint. You've got first base open and two out. You've got Brian Giles up with Piazza on deck. Do you walk him? No. I wouldn't walk him. It's too early in the game right now. You put another man on base and either Piazza might hit one. It's a three run home run. If it's later in the game, I mean, it's still Mike Piazza. Giles had a base hit to drive in the first San Diego run. Jackson was behind him three and one at the time. I don't, I don't like all these managers today that overmanage early in the game when it's just a one or two run lead. I guess the flip side of that would be though you look up and down this Padres lineup Giles is the one guy you don't want to let beat you. And I guess that would be the the argument for either pitching around him or or putting him on. Well it all goes on how the count goes if you fall behind then be very careful but it, you know go after him with the intent to get him out and make your pitch. Oh and one to Giles. Oh. Ooh. Way inside. That's always good. That's fair. We used to get that a lot. That's fair. That's my inside corner. 
You want to lean. That's the chance you take. Is it harder to get out of the way for a guy with an open stance who steps in like that? I don't know. I never hit open stance. I have to ask someone to know. Ask Brian Giles. I hit close stance. You look awkward trying to avoid that. Pitch. Well, they're diving. They're diving. To second base. Matsui coming in. And so Traxel gets Giles to end the inning, but the Padres regain the lead. A run on two hits. We go to the fourth. It's two to one San Diego. Get into the Mets lineup and join Beltron, Delgado, and the 2006 Mets at Shea. Six packs, ticket plans, and single games are on sale now. For tickets, go to Mets.com or call 718-507-TIXX. Here's that throw by Xavier Nady to the plate. Well, it's a soft line liner. Shouldn't have thrown home in the first place. And then the double sin of over throwing the cutoff man. As Carlos Beltron takes a strike. And then when the inning was over, Jerry Manuel, the Mets bench coach, who handles the outfielders, talking it over with Nady. Well, it should be said, that's a soft line drive. I mean, when I was playing in my 30s with the Mets, you know, early 30s, they were they're not going to throw me out in that ball. Not that I was a truck horse, but I wasn't a trailblazer, that's for sure. A truck horse? Yeah, I love that. My mom used to call <laughs> me a truck horse. <laughs> Who would you describe as a truck horse? Someone you, that was. If you weren't one. <laughs> what does that mean exactly? Truck horse means like a big, strong pulling horse. A, pulling an ice ice truck? <laughs> We're at Petco Park in San Diego. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez, Chris Cotter, opening game of the Mets' 10 game road trip. First of four between the Mets and Padres. San Diego up 2 to 1 in the fourth as Beltron fouls it off, 3 and 2. That was actually one of the beauties that my mother was from Beaumont Texas on the Louisiana border with Texas. And all that I had kind of a southern upbringing from my mother and all those southern terms. Beltron hits one hard off the glove of Gonzalez and into right field and Beltron is aboard. Adrian Gonzalez has a reputation as a very good defensive first baseman but he couldn't handle that hot shot and Beltron is on. The tough play here could he get in front that's the thing didn't get oh we Ole it look at him Ole Matador he could have got in front of that ball and it would have been off his body kept it and we've been able to keep it in front. He scored a base hit for Beltron and the Mets have the leadoff man on for the second straight inning. And here's Delgado who all of a sudden is starting to struggle just a bit over his last nine after flying out his first time up. And the Padres as they did his first time up do not overshift on the infield they play him fairly straight up. Except for the third baseman Castillo who's way off the line. Delgado fouls it back now. Teams have been doing a lot of running against San Diego, and particularly against Jake Peavy, who never holds runners on very well. But you've got Delgado with the plate and Beltron at first, and that opens up the question again: Is Beltron going to run with Delgado hitting? Beltron is not going to run with the bad leg. He's not. I guarantee it. I'd be, I'd be a surprise. He hasn't run a lot, Carlos. From the start of the season, he hasn't run a lot. But again, I think that has to do with Delgado hitting behind him a lot of it, doesn't it? Well, yes, he wants to leave that hole open. And Certainly you can do that but sometimes it might be good to steal a base in a certain time late in the game. 0 and 2 now to Delgado with David Wright on deck. Mets down by a run as they bat in the top of the fourth against Jake Peavy one of the elite starting pitchers in the National League. I am tight. And wasn't that inside. Carlos diving in. Watch this ball. That's just the sinker comes back just on top the inside corner. Everybody dives today. One and two to Delgado. And he strikes out on the fastball. So Peavy has his second strikeout. This is the 17th strikeout of the season for Carlos, and that's not a good swing. That's something you rarely see from Carlos. He's such a professional hitter. Well, Mets have a whole bunch of players who got off to great starts who all of a sudden are just having a little struggle right now. Wright broke out of an 0 for 11 skid with an opposite field double his first time up. Well, they ran into some good pitching, you know, and they ran that Kyle Davies to a heck of a ball game, and Hudson was just outstanding. 
I was shocked to read this on a comebacker past the mound though he leaves it for Barfield and he turns a double play. So maybe let it go and Barfield was right there for the 4 4 3 double play and the Mets are done in the top of the fourth it's two to one San Diego. Mets Weekly on Sportsnet New York, the show in the network that give you the inside look at the New York Mets. From the action during the season to the hot stove in the winter, the Mets will be front and center all year long. Mets Weekly, new episodes every Saturday at 12.30 only on Sportsnet New York. The WB11 knows you want an accurate, reliable weather forecast. You can plan your life around. That's where Mr. G comes in. He'll tell you what to expect morning, noon, and night, plus the days ahead. Mr. G's planning forecast only on the WB11 News. And you know it's so vital to have a good weatherman in New York. But what does a weatherman do in San Diego? It's always the same. It basically is. It's going to be sunny and 70 today and tomorrow and the next day. This might be out to take ball one. And I'm bored with my job. <laughs> <laughs> I got to have personality. It's all about personality. The Otza bounced into a double play his first trip and he hits one in the air to center field. But it's played with the boat on. And Carlos. Puts it away for the first down. As strange as it is to see Piazza wearing a San Diego uniform, it's even stranger to see him wearing 33. I think it's more strange to see him in with 33. Yeah. I mean, he wore 31 as a Dodger. He wore 31 as a Marlin for his five games and 31 as a Met. The only time before this year he hadn't worn 31 was in his rookie year with the Dodgers. When he first came up in 92, late in the season, he wore number 25. You get you get the number you take the number they give you in your rookie season. Here's Adrian Gonzalez but do you know who had 31 when Piazza arrived with the Dodgers. We just saw him yesterday. Tell me. Roger McDowell. Oh really there's Dave Winfield He's with the Dodgers at the time. Remember the Mets traded Roger to the Phillies in 89 and then he moved on to L.A. Here's Adrian Gonzalez who lined out to short his first time up. Two and oh the count to Gonzalez. Dave Winfield now of course is in the organization. He's a senior advisor vice president to the GM. I wouldn't want to get in a fight with him. Don't Six vice, eight. Don't he, vice presidents usually wear ties. <laughs> Not in California. I want to tell you something in this ballpark tonight at Petco Park in fact in the entire city of San Diego there are only three people wearing ties. You know who they are. You me and Chris Cotter. <laughs> Nobody wears ties here. Adrian Gonzalez draws a walk. Well, let's try that again with the weather so nice here in San Diego. And we love our broadcast partner, the WB11. So let's let you know that the WB11 does want you to know that you want an accurate, reliable weather forecast you can plan your life around. And that's Mr. G. We'll tell you what to expect morning, noon, and night, plus the days ahead. Mr. G's planning forecast only on the WB11. News. I wonder if Mr. G is still running in Central Park. I used to when I used to be able to run. I used to always run into him. Here's Khalil Green taking ball one. You ran into him literally? No. <laughs> We'd always cross paths ah. during our run Central on Park? the lower loop of Second Central Park. Yes. Mm -hmm. Green struck out looking his first time up. Gonzalez is back. Before my back went out, I used to run from my apartment on 49th and 2nd to Central Park, up to the reservoir, around the reservoir, then back to 49th and 2nd. 40, 40 for 45 minutes. I didn't go miles. I, I just minutes. It was around a 45 minute run for me. <laughs> Green bounces one slowly. Wright cuts it off and makes the underhand flip. Matsui can't make the turn in time. Little indecision there between Wright and Reyes, and Wright made a long underhand toss for the second out. Well, he goes way in the hole here aggressively. I don't understand why he did that and didn't throw. He's too far away to shovel that ball over there. I think at first he thought Reyes was going to go after that ball. And Matsui, Matsui knows a shortstop by trade. He's been hurt on that pivot. Jason Kendall hurt him in Oakland last year with a hard leg whip. And he did not get taken out on that ball and that was a situation right there. He could have been clocked. 
So two away green now at first and here's Vinny Castilla who had a comebacker to Traxel his first time up two to one San Diego bottom of the fourth. And another breaking ball from Traxel and that's all he's feeding Castilla tonight. And he's got the reputation of being a great fastball hitter but it's changed a little bit as he's gotten older. He's hit five home runs off Traxel 347 career average with five bombs so Traxel's aware of this is going to pitch him very carefully. One thing about Castilla he's a really good player but he's just not the same player when he's not playing in Colorado. Well no one is. I would love to have played 81 games in Colorado. And you probably have a lot of company in that. Nothing to the Castilla. I remember Todd Hundley after the Mets played the first ever game in Coors Field. Hundley hit a grand slam that day. That's lost a 14 inning game. But Hundley after the game said that the upper deck at right field at Coors Field was whispering to him. Through the light air. He never quite found the upper deck, but he certainly drew the ire of the Colorado pitching coach at the time, Frank Funk. He didn't appreciate the remark. Ever have a a certain ballpark whisper to you? Uh, no, <laughs> but I had a pitcher get mad at me when I was very young. I hit a home run off Andy Messersmith in dead center field at Bush Stadium, old Bush Stadium. 414. And I said in the paper I never hit a ball there before. <laughs> and I came out to the park the next day in bank practice and Messersmith made a point to come up to me and said, You never hit a ball that far, huh? <laughs> well, tr next time I face you. Try hitting this one. And I was like, oh, I was like 24 years old. I said, I'm sorry. I'll keep my mouth shut next time. Traxel keeping a lot of uh, a, a, a wary eye on Green, but he's not running, and it's one and two to Castilla. Cliff looks a little bored out there, but you know what? I think Cliff is happy just to be playing in this ballpark and not having to turn his head. And Carlos Beltran certainly understands what that means. It can get boring out there in the outfield. You can go the whole game without a ball hit to you. At least when I played first base, I always had action. There goes Green. Pitches a ball. Lodukas throw is wide. And Lodukas having a little trouble with his throwing right now. He started out throwing real well. And he struggled now the last couple of games with his throwing. Lodukas had just one for 13 throwing out in base deal. Fastball away. He just like he got, got it in his palm. It's just not a good throw. He hasn't got a real strong arm. He's got good fundamentals in his release with no wasted motion, but he hasn't really got a very strong arm. Well, the Padres have not been caught stealing yet this year. In fact, they're 11 for 11 as a team now. That's Green's second. And so he's in scoring position with two out, two and two, the count to Castilla. Traxel misses inside with the fastball, and so after getting ahead 0-2 on Castilla, he's gone full. Traxel has walked one. That was in this inning. Struck out two. A lot two runs and four hits. On three and two, Castilla swings and misses at the splitter, and Traxel strikes out Castilla to end the inning. His third strikeout, a walk and one left. We go to the fifth, two to one San Diego. Join the Brooklyn Cyclones this summer for good times and great baseball. Tickets go on sale Sunday, April 23rd at 9 a.m. at Keyspan Park in Shea Stadium by phone at 718-507-TIXX or online at brooklyncyclones.com. Arena football, demonstrated by Kurt Warner and John Elway. Arena quarterbacks pass almost every play. Score so high you'll need oxygen. Running for the sidelines? What sidelines? Offense also plays defense. Oh, one more thing. The field, only 50 yards long. The Dallas Desperados versus the Georgia Fours, Sunday at 3 on Sportsnet New York. What's going on, man? We should have been there by now. Well, it's uh, rush hour. Pedro Martinez is not a lot of hit. One nothing New York, we're at the top. Of the Why are you taking second? We're gonna be here all night. No, it will clear up any minute now. Three two on the way. Here's the payoff. Pick. You know what? Just let me out. I'm gonna walk from here. What? Relax, freak. Just relax. 
Sportsnet New York, home of the Mets, Jets, and all things New York sports. Get your New York sports here. Let's check out today's Affleck trivia question. Affleck. I was waiting for that. Where's that duck? Who has caught the most games in Mets history? Well, it makes sense to ask that question today with Mike Piazza in the house. There I'll say he's behind the plate. Jerry Grody. Cliff Floyd leads off in the fifth inning, and he takes ball one. I would say that's probably a pretty good guess. And what a pitching staff he caught. Steve Kuzma, Ryan, Gentry, Matlack, Matt <laughs> Floyd, Tug. Oh. A lot of talent there. Jim Floyd. McAndrew, Don Cardwell. Floyd grounded out his first trip, and Peavy falls behind him 3 0. Peavy hasn't walked about her, only four walks in 22 innings to start the year. Peavy is throwing a good game through four here, but his, he's up with his pitches. Look at that's not that's not knee high, and it's not a very good sinker. A guy like this, you've got, if you're a left hand hitter, he's going to throw that sinker, just shoot that left center field gap, hit it where it's pitched. He rips one, and that one snagged by Gonzalez. And he finds Peavy for the out. Well, Beltran hit one in the same spot that Gonzalez couldn't handle. This one he picked beautifully. Well, Gonzalez here, no ole here. This is just nice, nice play, nice hands, nice reaction. That is a one hop bullet in between hop. He shows great hands there. And a big hang with him for Cliff. I was talking with Jerry Coleman, longtime voice of the Padres and Hall of Famer, and he said that Adrian Gonzalez plays first base like you. Nady hits one to third, and Castillo throws him out for the second out. Really? He did. Well, that's high praise. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. I, I, I wouldn't downplay that at all. And Jerry Coleman, of course, as you told me, talked to him earlier. And Grew up with my dad, played against my my father in San Francisco in high school. My dad went to Mission High. This is back in the Depression days. And Jerry was saying your father was a great right hand throwing first baseman. Well, here's Kaz Matsui, who did it again, homer in his first at bat of the season, the only player in Major League history to do it in his first three seasons. In fact, Elias tells us that he was the only one to do it in his first two seasons. So he extends his Major League record. One and one. There's Jerry. The what, Colonel. What a good man. War hero, great baseball player, wonderful broadcaster, and just a terrific person. Two and one to Matsui. Here's what he did his first trip in completely unlikely fashion. Inside the park home run. Bangs this one down to Gonzalez, who makes the unassisted play, and Peavy has himself a 1 2 3 inning on three ground ball. We've come halfway now in San Diego. Still Padres 2, Mets 1. Matt Yalov here with a Chevrolet Baseball Night in New York update. Phillies and Nationals in Philadelphia. Nick Johnson teeing off not once but twice as the Nats down the Phillies by a score of 10 to 4. In American League East action, or at least a scoreboard, the Devil Rays knock off the Red Sox 5-1. Johnny Gomes with two home runs in the win. Back to Garrett. So Scott Casimir and the Devil Rays beating the Red Sox tonight. That snaps Boston's four-game winning streak. Meanwhile, Carlos Beltran, after playing the first four innings in the field and getting a base hit his last time up, has left the game. Andy Chavez takes over in center field, and you have to assume that that hamstring is still barking for Beltran. You know, we'll try to find out what's going on down there. I'm sure he's got still got problems. Ben Johnson leads off the home fifth against Traxel, and he takes it wide. And you know, you harken back to last year with Beltran. He hurt that quad muscle in Washington on the 1st of May and played with it for three weeks. Then he sat out for a week and a half and it affected him for another couple of months after that. And his goal was to avoid that same kind of scenario. Well here he sat for four days decided he was ready to go tonight and he plays half the game and he's out again. One and two to Johnson. 
So if he's re-aggravated it, it's always, you know, patience on leg injuries, on our pulls on any part of the body. Patience is so important. Well, you had that hamstring injury, and it took you... It took me a long time, long but time. mine popped. And I don't know if Carlos has popped. I mean, no one tells us anything down there. They're very secretive with their, with their injuries. Johnson pulls one over the bag. Foul ball. Just barely missed an extra base hit. But I know that the old... Here's, here's, here's the ball hit down the line, and that is not foul by much. Miss Guccione, the third base umpire, right on top of it. Tom McKenna, the old trainer emeritus for the Mets, and he was a trainer all those years with the Mets when they were in 73. He said the hamstrings are three weeks, and he always said when players said they're ready to play, he'd give them another week. Slowly to the left side. Right, nips Johnson at first, one away. If you re-injure a hamstring after you pulled it, it's three weeks, automatically said three weeks. So if the player said, I feel great, another week, so it's a month. Because if you re-injure it, it's six weeks. You right. double the recovery okay, So time. enlighten me on this, because when Beltron went out of the game the other day, nobody says pulled hamstring anymore. He said it was tight. You've got tight, you've got strained, you've got torn. Is, are there levels of gradation yes. in there? Yes, there is. Uh, obviously, a torn is the worst. There's different grades of a pull. Um, a strain, you still, as muscles have fibers, and you kind of break the fibers. I mean, I'm not a doctor, uh, but the tear, obviously, is the worst. But and if you pop the muscle, that that's bad. And another thing, too, Garrett, when you... Peavy hits one hard to Reyes. And he throws out the jogging Peavy for the second out. If you if you pull your muscle back, you get you get a big bruise the next day where the pull is because of the blood flow. Then you know you've got a serious pull. Now, I don't know if Carlos had. Well, he said that there was bruising back there. Okay, right? then he had then he, then he then he hurt it pretty good. If he had that, he pulled it pretty good. And yet he was back on the fifth day. But he's not back anymore. And there's Reyes who had all sorts of problems with his legs. Basically, three months of the season in 04 because of a leg injury. But was able to stay healthy all of last season. Here's Dave Roberts taking a strike. Roberts already two for two, tripled and scored in the first, then singled home the go ahead run in the third. You just kind of get a feeling right now that this game is just kind of moving along swiftly, and it's just a San Diego move along, kind of a day at the beach. It's the Mets cannot fall into the trap of being flat. After the two, the three-game series at home, and coming here without an off day. Normally, you come out here, you have an off day, a day to regroup. You come, you, you get up like we did today at six o'clock, it's like nine o'clock, or whatever your, your pattern is, three hours early. But you have the day to get acclimated. Those are scary numbers for the Mets right now. One run, three hits. Curveball just misses one and two. They had a run on three hits on Tuesday night. They had a run on three hits yesterday. And they have a run on three hits today. On one and two, Roberts takes the splitter low, two and two. That's why it's always good to have a different personalities on your team. You just can't have 25 laid back characters on your team. In 86, we had myself, we had Gary Carter, we had Wally Backman, we had Lenny Dykstra. We're all spunky, spunky kind of characters. And when the team was flat, they, 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 they would center field and deep Chavez back got a good jump on that ball and ran it down well done by Andy Chavez just into the game to replace Beltron and so Traxel has himself a one two three inning we go to the six two to one San Diego bring a group to Shea watch the Mets with family friends or community organizations choose ballpark seating or a hospitality option like the picnic area for a full calendar of special events including fundraisers call 718-507-TIXX to book your group now They go to the sixth inning in San Diego. Jake Peavy and the Padres working with a two to one lead. That's only run coming on the inside the park home run by Kaz Matsui. So in the last three days only Mets second baseman have driven in runs. Chris Woodward drove in the only run each of the last two days and Matsui today. And a strike to Traxel. Traxel had a comeback for his first trip one for five on the season. 
Right back to PV and into his glove, one away. Faxel retired on the line drive. One away, Jose Reyes coming up. As we check out our Hyundai in game box score, and we see Matsui in that eighth spot in the order with the inside the park home run in his first at bat of the season. And that's been it. Three hits for the Mets again tonight. Here's Reyes, has been up twice, both times fly to left. I was surprised to read, Keith, that when Kyle Davies and Tim Hudson threw back to back complete games against the Mets the last two days, it was the first time that it happened against the Mets, complete game wins by the opposition since 1996. What does that tell you about the way the game has changed? Absolutely. That was Shane Reynolds and Daryl Kyle. Two and one to race. Then both with the Astros. Here's Tom Glavin. Lost a tough one yesterday. See, there's Jose getting under that ball again. He's hitting the bottom half of the ball. And he just can't keep making the same mistake. There's the swing. That's a good pitch to hit right there. You see his shoulders are angled down 45 degrees. Your bat will follow the angle of your shoulders. On two and two, Peavy throws a breaking ball and Reyes down looking. And that's the best pitch that Peavy's thrown tonight, a backdoor slider right there. That's the third strikeout for Reyes for a PB as Reyes goes down looking. Hey, during the 2006 season, the Mets' half of the sixth inning during road games on Sportsnet New York will be the Mets' home run inning presented by Barbados Tourism. Stay tuned to SNY or visit SNY.TV for details. Nice place, Barbados. Here's Loduca. He needs one foul. Do inside the park home runs count? You get to go to Barbados on an inside the park home run of yeah, the season. It's a home okay. run. All right. Just check it. Triple in an error wouldn't count. I agree with you. Barbados <laughs> is a nice guy, isn't it? I love Barbados. I've just been there once in my life and I had a very nice time. So Andy Chavez on deck. He took over for Beltron. Still no word on Beltron, but you have to assume that it's a recurrence of the hamstring problem. Loduca batting with two out and nobody on. And he rolls over one to third. Easy play for Castilla and another easy inning for PB. He gets the Mets one, two, three. He's now retired eight in a row. Middle of the sixth at Petco Park, two to one Padres. Join the crowd. For the latest information on Mets promotional giveaways and other special events at Shea, visit Mets.com or call 718-507-TIXX. Get your tickets today. Last week, Sportsnet New York covered New York sports issues like no one else on Daily News Live. I think they might be as good or better than last year. For me, the tough, one of the toughest challenges that we have in front of us is definitely in this division. Without Carl Pavano, they need some of these three and four guys to you know, be somebody who might be able to win 12 to 15 games. He's talented, no question, but he's not a leader, not a pure point guard. Daily News Live is only on Sportsnet New York. Matt Yaloff here with a baseball night in New York update. Miguel Tejada against the Indians going deep. His third home run of the year. The O's down the tribe 9-4. to four. Now the O's come to New York tomorrow to take on the Yankees. The game marks the return to New York of former Met Chris Benson. He comes in with a 1-2 and two record. He'll face Chin Ming Wong who throws for the Yanks. Back to Gary in San Diego. And those Orioles have been playing pretty well. They're 9-7. and seven. Remember they were blown out by Cleveland a couple of days ago and then came back yesterday and won 18 to 9. So that's an interesting club they have in Baltimore this year. You see Doug Mirabelli taking over the catching and it's something the Padres have been doing in the early season. Well it's when they had the lead it's a defensive replacement. Obviously Mirabelli known for his catching skills his defensive skills. But it's an early defensive replacement well, no, at the top of the seventh. No I don't I disagree it's a one run game in the seventh. The Mets have speed. You got Indy Chavez leading off. Chavez taking Beltron's spot on the lineup, and it takes a strike. And he just hit, so I, I think it's. <coughs> excuse me. It, it's a, it's a, there's Traxel and his 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 gaze there, pitching a fine ball game. But the Mets again not managing a whole lot of offense, just a run and three hits again tonight. As Chavez fouls went back, and he started four straight games in center field while Beltron was out. 
plays a solid center field but he's yet to hit he's just one for 14 to start the season and that hit came his first time up. Well that whole contingent of Valentin Chavez and Castro that played during that period all went combined four for thirty nine. The only one of the irregulars who did well was Chris Woodward filling in for Anderson Hernandez. By the way now Hernandez is twenty two years old and he's got a bulging disc in his back. As Chavez strikes out on 0 2 that's the fourth strikeout. Now the most advanced traffic information is just a click away with WB11.com's commuter cast. Get real time traffic updates on your computer every weekday afternoon at 4. Log on to WB11.com for commuter cast. Now you had back problems late in your career but ended my career but a 22 year old with a bulging disc and then he says I'm a slow healer that was a little bit odd I thought Delgado rips one foul oh, one. is that from years of experience with a bulging disc <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I just thought it was very strange I mean I know he was in a lot of pain and oh. you could see him in, walking around the clubhouse before they sent him to the hospital yesterday Delgado broke his bat there on that ball, that slider inside. Peavy's starting to throw a slider a little better right now. There's no worse pain than having your bulging disc rubbing up against your nerves. And when I had my my back surgery, I had two discs that broke off the main disc. And they were blocking 75% of my nerve passage. I, I could not put my pants on. It was 24 hour constant pain and was it was a nerve tingling pain. The more the, the good thing for Hernandez is that it's they're going to try to fix it without surgery. Delgado hits one in the air off the left side and that'll go in the crowd. And you saw the catcher there give a high target. He wanted that fastball up and out of the strike zone. They're going up and down the ladder on Delgado. And Peavy, watch the catcher here with a high, high, a high glove. And Peavy went upstairs. And a struggle for Delgado right now. Oh, for his last 10, including a strikeout his last time up. And it's a breaking ball down. And he shook him off, going for a sinker. Ah, we're going to rethink this. We're going to rethink. I agree with the catcher. Hard curve ball down in the dirt after going up the ladder. Doug Mirabelli known for his defense. Change up and he wants it down. One and two to Delgado. Mets down two to one as they bat in the top of the seventh. Jake Peavy in his fourth start of the year. This is the third good one. He had one where he got rattled around a little bit, but not tonight. Fastball away. And he hits it away over the bag and down the line. They were not over shifted and so Roberts gets there quickly and holds Delgado to a single. Now I know you get beat more in the hole than you do down the line. And this is the pitch he got up. Now he didn't get it down and that's just good hitting. We've seen Delgado do this. Particularly with two strikes when you got a hitter that does this. And you've got a one run lead in the seventh or a tie ball game. No doubles. Now that was only a single because Delgado doesn't run well. Oh, also, oh, you can't get the lineup. Also because Roberts in left field was playing as close to the lineup as we've seen anybody against Delgado. I mean, he runs so well he's got center fielder speed. So now the tying run at first with one out and here's right. David had an opposite field double in the second. He's one for two. And the Mets have four hits tonight. And there's a strike to right and Delgado snaps out of that 0 for 10. Wright's double his first time up tonight snapped an 0 for 11. So the big bats have been cooled but the Mets getting good pitching and hoping to come back late in this game. They're going to go away. 0 and 2 to right. Two fastballs up in the strike zone. Plenty of plate. That last pitch was one that David normally takes to right field. Now we saw in the Atlanta series. Braves going hard inside on right with ahead in the count. Padres got burned on the first inning with Davis double pushed by going away. Let's see what the catcher wants to do. He wants a high fastball. Too high. 
That, sir, that pitch serves no purpose. I'm sorry. If you're going to waste a pitch 0-2, then you're going to put it under someone's chin. Not to hit them, but move them off the plate. Mirabella going to that Yogi Berra catching stance. Almost slider. standing up. He wants a slider now. And he strikes him out with a slider. Five strikeouts for Jake Peavy. Two away. Peavy has found his slider here in the last couple innings. Starts out on the outside corner and breaks out away. The mortal words of Steve Carlton, pitchers try to expand the strike zone, and that is a classic example. Throwing the ball starts out around an inch off, uh, an inch off the outside corner as a strike and breaks around three inches late as a ball. It's hard to lay off. Only the third time Wright's been struck out in 54 at-bats. So now two out, Delgado still at first, and here's Cliff Floyd, who both times was grounded out to the first baseman. The last time, a terrific play by Gonzalez. Good slider. That was like a cutter. This has become his big pitch. Look at this. Last minute action. That's a cut fastball, and that is in a perfect location. So we saw from Hudson that great slider yesterday. Well, he's got better command with his breaking stuff than he does his fastball. Floyd takes it inside, one and one. And you notice the catcher again wants to pitch up high, and he gave him the sign after he caught the ball, like good pitch. That's where he wanted it, inside, up. And let's see what they what, what the purpose was. What do they want to achieve here? Change up. So after up and in, they're going to go away with a change up. And Floyd swings and misses, one and two. There's a change. It's a, it's a ball. Seeking so change up. It's a ball. You just can't put you like KV in your left hand hitter. You, you can't try to pull him. He's going to throw you that sinker ball on the outside corner and just sit on that thing all day. And then you get it, wear it out in the left center field. Change up. KV ahead of the count, one and two with two out. Davey hasn't walked a batter. He's struck out five. He's allowed a run on four hits. The only run coming on the Kazmat Sui inside the park home run. Took off two signs. Took off a change and a slider. Wants a sinker away. And one and two. Floyd takes it high. And Peavy badly missing his target there. Two and two. You see again, like I said, he's got better command of his breaking ball when he does his fastball. He's been up in the strike zone all day with his fastball. Davey up to 96 pitches on the evening. Trying to finish off the top of the seventh. That's a good call by the catcher. Slider in. On two and two. Floyd takes it inside. And now it's a full count. So Peavy got ahead of him. But now Delgado will be in motion with three and two and two down. Nady waiting on deck. Change up away. We'll see. Could be a fastball away too. Change up. Took him off. He wants. He loves his slider. He knows that's his pitch. He has. This is his best pitch tonight. Delgado runs the three-two hit in the air, shallow center field. In comes Johnson, and he makes the play, and the inning is over. So Peavy works around the one-out single by Delgado. Seventh inning stretch time, two to one, San Diego. If you're looking for Sportsnet New York on the web, you'll find it at SNY.tv, your online home of all things New York sports. Log on for news, video, and special features. Click here for exclusive daily content like NY90, 24 hours of New York sports recapped in 90 seconds. Ask the booth so you can send your questions to Gary, Keith, and Ron, and your digital newsstand with links to all the local online sports pages. If you want your SNY online, bookmark SNY.tv. Get your New York sports online here. Hey kids, be a part of the team by joining the Mets Fan Club for Kids, presented by the Sports Authority. For more information, visit Mets.com slash Kids Club or call 201-784-9600 during regular business hours. Steve Troxel begins what will probably be his final inning of work as we go to the bottom of the seventh. 
Hodge has thrown 91 pitches through six innings and is due a turn at bat in the top of the eighth. He's pitched well. He's down two to one as Khalil Green leads off. And Green takes a strike. He has pitched outstanding. Five hits, one walk, three strikeouts. And just one infield single over the last three innings. So things have gotten better as the night's gone along for Traxel, bouncing back from a rough one his last time out. And he misses high with a curveball, one and one. Traxel got wrapped around for four runs and nine hits in five innings against the Brewers last Saturday. But again, pitching on his normal rest tonight, and he's been very sharp with that curveball. That has been his best pitch. He spots his fastball, but he's had an outstanding breaking ball tonight. And he just misses two and two. Traxel is a big game plan guy. He'll do a lot of studying of the opposition to try and find weaknesses. And he's got enough different weapons to go to. Goes on the breaking ball and Green singles through the hole on the left. So there's the sixth San Diego hit. And it comes leading off in the bottom of the seventh. In 2006 Monday, the Mets and Sportsnet New York are teaming up to strike out cancer. For every K the Mets pitching staff registers, Hyundai, the Mets and Sportsnet New York will donate $25 to the Hope and Heroes Children's Cancer Fund. Traxel has chipped in with three strikeouts tonight. Here's Vinny Castilla. He's been retired on a comebacker and a strikeout. As Traxel has worked the curve against Castilla, especially tonight. It's a good time for a hit and run here. Close ball game, late. Vinny Castilla goes that way well. Get the count in your favor. And the count in your favor would be two and one. Put the runner in motion. Chad Bradford getting ready in the bullpen. Feliciano, the left hander, looking on. 1 0 to Castilla. And Traxel falls behind 2 0. And Castilla taking a look down at the third base coach for the Padres, and they've got a new third base coach this year. That would be the, that would be the closer's big brother, Glenn Hoffman. Former Dodger manager is now the third base coach. There's Scott Linebring. He's the eighth inning guy, and then you got Trevor Hoffman for the ninth. Well, a good pitch to hit right here if you're a hitter. Here's the 2 0 to Castilla, and Traxel misses ball three. So Traxel has only walked one tonight behind on Castilla, 3 0. Oh. Well, this hurts because. You've got a 3 0 count. Traxel's going to come back for a fastball for a strike. Then you left with a 3 1 and 3 2 potential, and the runners will be in motion. The runner will be in motion on both counts 3 and 1 and 3 and 2. On 3 and 0, oh, Castilla takes a strike. Oh, well, we're glad you could stay up late with us from Petco Park. It's midnight in Manhattan, but the night is still young in San Diego. It's midnight for us also. Nah. We're on West Coast time. Not yet. <laughs> Three and one the count to Vinny Castilla. The little green at first and nobody out. Traxel checks in on green. We're very much aware that green is going to go, but green is not going to go aggressively on this. It's almost like a hit and run. You don't get picked off here when you're put in motion. Three and one. Green had a stolen base back in the fourth inning, his second of the year. And he is going. And it's ball four. And the Padres have the first two men on against Traxel here in the seventh. So there's just the second walk given up by Traxel. Willie Randolph moving up the steps. He's got Bradford ready in the bullpen. And Ben Johnson, a right hand batter, coming up. And he'll make the sign and bring Bradford into the game. So Traxel will leave after six innings plus. He pitched well tonight. Mets haven't scored for him. And he leaves trailing two to one, and Chad Bradford will come in the game here in the seventh. Steve Traxel exits after 101 pitches over six innings plus. The 2006 Mets official merchandise catalog is now available, offering a great selection of items for every Mets fan. For your copy call 800 Pro Team.
Chad Bradford has not been used a whole lot. It's been four days since he went to the mound, and that was only for one batter, but he's been very effective when called upon. He has done a fine job so far this year in his three and two thirds innings, and you're correct. He missed the entire Atlanta series. And you see the numbers there. Right handers have yet to get a hit. I got to believe there'll be a bunt here and a pinch hitter in the on deck circle for Peavy. Here's Jeff Blum, who had a game winning home run in the World Series for the White Sox last year. Now a Padre, he's on deck. Let's look for the bunt from Ben Johnson, who's one for two. And Bradford misses away. Mets playing that bunt the normal way. No, no, no uh, wheel play, which the shortstop breaks for third. Playing it straight. Runner at second, Green runs pretty well. Castilla at first is not fast. David Wright giving the signs on the infield of which are the four bunt plays they're going to use. Wright cheats in, then backs up, and Johnson takes a strike. He didn't think so. One and one. We've got to bunt it down the third base line here. Wright is not really being real aggressive. Which he normally is. He dances in and out, and we saw that cost the Mets in a game earlier this year when Pedro Martinez had to field a bunt and then threw it away. On one and one, Johnson fouls off the bunt. Now he's in a one and two hole. We'll see what Bruce Bochy does. With two strikes on Johnson. See if he puts it back on with his eighth hitter. These are the little fundamentals of the game. I know it's hard to bunt, particularly off a submariner. You're not used to seeing a guy with delivery like that. It makes it all the more difficult. But these are the little things that win or lose your ball games. You got a switch hitter on deck in Blum, and the Mets keeping the bullpen busy. As Bradford works on Johnson, let's see if the bunt is still on. It's not, and he fouls it off. Delgado and Wright were hedging in just in case. There's Duaner Sanchez, the right hander. Pedro Feliciano, the left hander, staying busy. Blum, the switch hitter on deck, pretty good for both sides. Padres have three switch hitters on their bench tonight. Gives the manager a lot of flexibility. On one and two, Johnson bounces one slowly. Wright will have to go to first. He'll have to hurry, not in time. Infield single for Ben Johnson, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. Well, tough break here by the Mets. David has no wasted motion here. Good throw to first. Got a little bit of a late break in on the ball. He wasn't playing deep. Better if he's still being in his bunt defense. As it turned out, it was a slow roller, and now Willie Randolph on his way out to the mound, and he may want. I'm not sure if he'll want the left-hander or if he wants Sanchez, who can strike somebody out in this spot. We got Eric Young, who's a left-hand. We got Eric Young on the right-hand bench. Blum, a switch hitter, I think was announced into the game, and now Feliciano will come on to face him, and that'll make Blum a right hand batter. Pedro Feliciano walks into a mess. Base is loaded, nobody out. And the switch hitting Jeff Blum will be the batter. Well, this is his second appearance. The three innings he worked was in that Atlanta series. That was, night, that was night before last, and you know, Feliciano came out of that appearance saying that he was gassed. I said, you need a day or two? He said, I need a week. Really? And we'll see how much he has left in the tank tonight. Something's left, best left unsaid. The infield comes in with the bases loaded and nobody out. The Mets already down by a run. Blum is 0 for 10 to start the season. And he takes that backdoor breaking ball for a strike, 0 and 1. Blum is a also a better left-hand hitter. A lifetime 237 hitter against lefties. Hit only 213 in 94 
at bats against left handers last year. And he's 0 for 2 in his career against Feliciano. And he takes another breaking ball for a strike 0 and 2. And the spot where Feliciano would dearly like a strikeout. He's ahead 0 and 2. Well, here's two sliders in the back door sliders on the outside corner. And as a pinch hitter, you cannot go up there and take. You've got to go up there hacking. Dave Roberts on deck. He's had a big night already. Infield in, of course. Two to the Blum. He pops it up. Delgado retreating. Can he get there? He does with the basket catch, and Green will hold it third as Delgado gets it in. That's a nice play by Delgado and foul ground for the first out. So one away. Now Dave Roberts is due up. He's a left hand batter and Eric Young is going to bat for him. You see Green at third Castilla at second and Johnson at first and the former Rutgers football star Eric Young now 39 years old. Will be the pinch hitter for Dave Roberts. We'll see if Willie Randolph responds with Juan or Sanchez. If he does, then Bruce Bochy has Mark Bellhorn, a switch hitter, to go to. And here comes Willie. He'll bring Sanchez into the game. So the wheel's spinning here in San Diego. The Padres with a 2-1 lead in the bottom of the seventh. Base is loaded one out, and Duaner Sanchez, who's been the good so far this year, will come into the game to replace Feliciano. Sports Night on Sportsnet New York. The news and information source for all New York area sports fans. Three shows a night. The destination for the latest news on every area team. Sports Night covers the stories that New York sports fans care about. Our reporters and anchors will deliver to you live from Studio 51 at Rockefeller Center West. If it happens in New York, it happens on Sports Night. 6 p.m., 10 p.m., and 1 a.m. every night. Only on Sportsnet New York. Get to New York sports here. Juan Sanchez has had a couple of days off after pitching a solid inning and a third against the Braves on Monday night. And he'll come in here to face Eric Young with the bases loaded and one out. Well, Young still runs pretty well. I cheated and I said he's 39. He won't be 39 for a couple of weeks. But he does still run well, and the Mets are going to play about halfway on the infield. Green at third, Castilla at second, Johnson at first, and one out. And Sanchez misses ball one. And as a hitter, you always like in this situation where the pressure is on the pitcher here, but he misses first pitch with a breaking ball with the bases loaded, falls behind one and oh. Hit to third, diving stop right, gets the out at second, relay by Matsui in time, side retired. A gorgeous double play turned by Wright and Matsui, and Sanchez gets through the inning. David Wright, who made the bare hand play for the ages here in San Diego last year, makes the diving play, and Matsui with the pickup and turn. What a play! Join the Brooklyn Cyclones this summer for good times and great baseball. Tickets go on sale Sunday, April 23rd at 9 a.m. at Keyspan Park in Shea Stadium by phone at 718-507-TIXX or online at brooklyncyclones.com. Whenever there's a Mets game on Sportsnet New York, it's Baseball Night in New York, presented by ChevyOffers.com. From the pregame show to the postgame show and every pitch in between. And from our studio, we'll catch you up with news, scores, and highlights from all around the league. Baseball Night in New York, presented by ChevyOffers.com. Well, Bruce Bochy came out and argued vehemently the call at first base on the double play that kept the Padres off the board. Just a nice play by Wright. Look at the nice play by Matsui. That's the play. And... High base go with the runner here. It looks safe from here. And Young couldn't believe it. John Hirschbeck with the call at first base. David Wright. Look at that celebration. This and also Sanchez. This is just a fine play. Now, I, I want to look again, if we can, at the runner at second base, Ben Johnson, because he went in on Matsui and then appeared to throw an elbow out. He tried to throw an elbow and missed. But Matsui, that ball is in the dirt. And that's who we know it does not like to hang in there. You watch the elbow right there late. That's clean. That is clean. But Matsui hung in there and made a strong throw on a throw in the dirt. So he made a terrific play. They both did right in Matsui. But double kudos to 
Kaz. Well, Kaz's first game of the year has already had an impact with his bat and now with his glove. That's a sparkler. Make that kind of pickup and that kind of throw against a speedy runner. As Nady takes a strike, 0 and 2. Scott Linebrink on to pitch in relief. The Padres' bullpen was one of their major strengths last year in winning the National League West, and it looks like it may be again this year. And Linebrink is a big key to that. Hard throwing right hander. Nady hits it hard down the line. That's a fair ball off the jutting stands. Nady will go for second as the shortstop Green goes out to get it, and Nady pulls in with a double. That's like a Fenway Park where that shortstop has to field the ball off the jutting stand. And the Mets have the tying run in scoring position. Hanging slider. Don't do that to Nady. And Castilla guarding the line. And the ball's hit so hard it gets by him. Double. You cannot let the ball get by you. You've got to play close enough to the line where in the hardest hit ball possible you can make the play. Well, let's see if Matsui is asked to bunt that tying run over to third base. Well, the adage in baseball is what? You play for the win on the road and the and the tie at home. I don't buy it. I think you've got to have this game. You've got to advance the runner. Franco on deck as Matsui takes inside. Well, Kaz Matsui, his first time up today, his first time up this season in the big leagues. It went off the glove of Brian Giles in right field that hugged the wall and Matsui circled the bases for an inside the park home run. The third straight year in which his first at bat of the season has resulted in a home run. And we sent the Elias Sports Bureau back to the record books again. We already know Matsui is the first ever to do it in his first three seasons. This time he's swinging and he fouls it off one and one. And they dug out the fact that Ken Griffey Jr. In 97, 98, and 99, let off three straight seasons. His first at bat with a home run. So Cass is going to have to do it again next year if, uh, if he wants that record to himself. Well, this is a situation right here where you have to advance the runner. The least thing that you can do is at least hit a ground ball on the right side of the infield, move the runner to third. And he's been pretty good at doing that. That Sui. Two and one. When he was hitting second behind Reyes. Which was a new role for him last year. He became rather adept at hitting that ball to the right side. Well, Matt Matsui knows how to play the game. He knows what's required of him right here, what needs to be done. This is a big game opening a road trip here after losing two out of three at home. It's a big game. Nady at second with nobody up, but Matsui hits it to third. And Castilla looks back the runner and throws him out. He cued that ball right to Castilla, so Matsui unable to advance Nady to third. Really, well, it's very good at not showing his emotions. I'm sure he learned that from Joe Torre over there with the Yanks. He might have betrayed a little bit of emotion there when he tugged at his cap like that. Well, that's frustrating. He had the bunt on the first pitch, took it off, figuring Matsui would be able to get an 80 to third, but he couldn't do it. So now here's Julio Franco with one out and the tying run at second. Franco batting for Sanchez who came in to get the big double play from Eric Young. And Aaron Howman will get ready to pitch in the bottom of the eighth. So I guess you can already see if you're watching. Mets have a pretty good bullpen. Pretty deep. Bullpen. Bradford and Sanchez. And Feliciano doing a wonderful job getting out of that seven. Franco takes ball one. Traxel started that inning by allowing the first two to reach base. Feliciano got unlucky giving up the infield single. But Bradford did, and then Feliciano got Blum to pop up, and Sanchez came in to get the double play. And Sanchez got the lucky double play. The ball hit hard, and a great play made by, made by Wright and Matsui for the double play. Franco one for six to start the year. Lifts one to right. It's pretty well hit. Back goes Giles onto the track near the wall. It's out of here! Julio Franco becomes the oldest player in the history of Major League Baseball to hit a home run. He hit it to just the right part of the park, that short porch down the right field line, a 2-1 pitch hit home run, and the Mets take the lead for the first time tonight. It's 3-2 to two New York. There's Willie smiling. How clutch. That's the spark the Mets may have needed. 
Franco earned about every other record for the oldest player to do this and the oldest player to do that. Well, now at age 47, he's the oldest player ever to hit a home run in the history of the game. Fastball up, meant to get down and away, got it up and had too much of the plate. And you're right, he hit it right at the right part of the ballpark. He's 322 down that line. And he gets the back rope from Matsui. You pick me up. You pick me up. And he did. The man's carrying a pretty good load for this team right now. On and off the field. And that was a huge hit for this ball club. As Reyes takes a strike. Well, everything set up just perfectly for for Bochi. That's three and one to Reyes. Line Brink is this very solid eighth inning guy to take it to Hoffman. And you know, they, you can make all the right moves as a manager. And if they're not executed, they don't happen. And the funny thing is, this is not supposed to be a home run hitter's ballpark. Reyes pulls a base hit through the hole in the right. And so he has his first hit of the night and the third hit of the inning against Line Brink. But if you're going to hit a home run in this ballpark, the place where Franco hit it is by far the best place to go. It's 322 down the line, and there's a little what they call a jury box, which sticks out from that right field corner. And Franco nailed it. And if you're 47, you're going to hit a home run. You got to find the find the right spot, and and that is the right spot. That is a seriously clutch home run. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for the Mets to win this opening game of, the, of this road trip, particularly after the Atlanta series at home. One to know to Leduca. Well, they were down one nothing early. They tied it up on Matsui's inside the park home run. The Padres went right back out in front, and Jake Peavy was able to carry that through seven. But the Padres loaded the bases in the bottom of the seventh with nobody out, didn't score, and now Franco's two-run homer gives the Mets their first lead. There goes Reyes, pitch outside, Mirabelli's throw into the runner. Reyes takes a step toward third and then thinks better of it. So Reyes has his sixth stolen base of the year. Well, he's tough to throw out here, and look at Loduca trying to distract the catcher. Not a good throw up the line. Reyes just gets such great acceleration. That was just a fantastic jump. Reyes' biggest problem lately has been getting on base. Just his third hit in his last 24 at bats. Darren Balsley, the pitching coach, out to talk to Linebrook as he struggles here in the eighth. I hate to think of Reyes with that head first slide all the time. You know now that Marcus Giles may have a far more serious injury. We heard it in, in New York with a head first slide. So many guys hurt their haunt their hands and their shoulders in that way. There's the head first slide and the Giles and his head first slide in New York in that series may have chipped the bone and may have to go seriously deep on a disabled list. Now Reyes in scoring position Scott Cassidy the right hander Alan Embry the left hander up in the San Diego bullpen. Two and out to Leduca. And he hits it in the air to deep center field. Back goes Johnson near the track at the wall. He makes the catch. Tagging Reyes, he'll go on to third. Leduca hit that ball well, but it appeared to die out there on the warning track. And Leduca just staring out there. Can't believe that ball didn't leave the yard. Well, he crushed this ball. Look at this. That's out at Shea and out at most ballparks. But this is one of the bigger parks. And he just clobbered this ball. It's 396 in center field. But they say this is the pitcher's park. We know all the Padre hitters have moaned and groaned about the depth of this of this stadium. Line break is leaving, and they'll bring in the left-hander Embry to pitch to Andy Chavez, three to two, New York. Thirty-six-year-old left-hander Alan Embry is on to pitch for the Padres. Check out the National League scoreboard sponsored by Toyota. Reds beat the Brewers 12 8. Edwin Encarnacion with a home run. The uh, Nationals jumped on Ryan Madsen for five of the first and won easily at Philadelphia 10 4. 
Giants and Diamondbacks six six in the eighth. Giants up by a half game over Colorado in that National League West, which may well be won by a team two games over 500 again this year. The way this division is starting out. Well, here's Embry, who had some elbow surgery in the offseason to take out some bone chips, and he's been great early on in the season. He saved his bone chips. They're on his mantle in a glass <laughs> case. <laughs> was five chips and two spurs, and he looks at them every day. Here's Andy Chavez trying to drag a bunt, got it down, and there's nowhere to throw him out. It'll bring a run home, and it's 4 to 2 New York. A great drag bunt by Andy Chavez. And it brings home Reyes with the third run of the inning. It's now four to two. Well, that is just a real fine play. Chavez has not hit a lot against left-handers. And this is a beautiful drag bunt down the left side of the infield. Left-hander follows through towards the third base line. And of course, with Reyes' speed, forget about it. Well, for Andy Chavez, it's only his second hit of the year, his first RBI, as he brings home Reyes with an insurance run. And now the Mets have a two-run lead. All three runs this inning charged to Scott Linebrook. Linebrink. Three runs and two thirds of an inning charged to Linebrink's account. And now here's Delgado facing Embry, who, when he's healthy, is a hard throwing left hander. He struggled the last couple of years, pitched for the Red Sox and the Yankees last year, had an ERA well over seven. But he's given up nothing this year. Well, here's the drag bun again, and this caught everybody by surprise a little bit here. It's a good pitch to drag bun. It was on the inner part of the plate because he's running to first base. But look how his bat was level. It was a good pitch for him to bunt. Just a fine play right there that keeps the infielders off the lines at the corners for the Mets. A great insurance run. Delgado has a couple of home runs in his career against Embry, five for 19 overall. Mm. One and one. Did not miss by much. 93 miles an hour. That tells you that Embry's healthy. He says he's pitching without pain for the first time in a long time. It makes you wonder why he didn't have surgery earlier. He said that he was thinking about doing it last spring while with the Red Sox, but that they didn't have another lefty, and he felt that he couldn't do it because they had so many games early in the season against the Yankees. As it turned out, by the end of the year, he was pitching for the Yankees. Alan Embry now 36 years old, and if he's healthy, he can pitch well past 40. Left-handed reliever who can throw like he does. And he's the only left-hander the Padres have in their bullpen. Delgado crushes one to deep right center field. Giles goes back and looks up, and it's out of here. Carlos Delgado with a two-run homer over that 4-0-2 mark in right center. A laser beam for Delgado, his sixth home run of the year. The Mets have scored five runs here in the eighth inning, and they now lead at 6-2. That is a big game breaker right there. Another clutch our home run by Delgado. It just took the Mets a couple hours to get it in gear. They were still on East Coast time. That's 12:33 East Coast time. This must be the hour. <laughs> They're a good nocturnal team. David Wright takes inside after every game of the home run. Wants a fastball in and got it over the middle and down. And Carlos has such a short swing for a big guy, a big power hitter. And there's Willis' reaction. And just enough, that ball went right off the top of the fence and over. And right takes a fastball, one and one. There's been a lot of moves late in this game, and they've all been the right moves by both managers. Well, Embry. Embry comes in to face Chavez. Chavez puts down a beautiful bunt, the right thing to do. You got a left hand hitter, left hand hitter in Delgado, and he goes deep. Two and one to right. Well, Embry had allowed just one hit so far this season. 
Chavez as was the second and then Delgado's the third and now Carlos will note that in his little book his third career home run against Embry in 20 at bats. I got a fastball. I crushed it. <laughs> Dear was diary. In, was he in school? <laughs> Three and one to right. <laughs> I will not hit a two run home run off a left hander again. <laughs> write, that, write that I, 20 times. I don't think that's what he's writing. <laughs> <laughs> now go in the corner. Three and one to right. Who's one for three on the night. He doubled back in the second. Six to two New York. Five runs home in the inning and Wright draws a walk. And so the inning continues and Embry hasn't retired anybody. That's the first walk issued by San Diego pitching tonight. Well Jake Peavy threw seven terrific innings and now he'll get a no decision. He allowed just to run on four hits but the Padre bullpen which has been its strength the last couple of years blowing up here in the eighth. Scott Linebrink tagged for three runs and Embry for two. Now here's Floyd the ninth man up in the inning. Cliff returning to the lineup tonight from the ribcage pull is 0 for 3. Right runs and he'll steal the base easily. He got a huge jump against Embry. Second stolen base of the year for Wright. Well he just was going to go at the break here and see as soon as he broke from the belt he's on his way if he doesn't come over you haven't got a chance to throw anybody out. And that's a smart play by right now puts him in scoring position. Oh and one to Floyd. Up the middle base hit right around third. He'll score without a throw. The Mets have scored six in the eighth inning. LaFloy joins the party with an RBI single, and it's seven to two, New York. Alan Embry has faced four batters, retired none, and he won't get a chance to do it to a fifth batter because Bruce Bochy's on his way out to the mound, and he'll make a pitching change. So the Mets blow up here in the eighth. Six uh, runs. Embry departs. It's seven to two, New York. Tomorrow, the Mets continue their series with the Padres as rookie Brian Bannister takes the hill. Baseball Night in New York, presented by ChevyOffers.com, delivers all the action. Mets, Padres, coverage begins tomorrow at 9.30 on Sportsnet New York. Get your New York sports here. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Sterling Mets and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Sterling Mets. Well, the Mets have scored six runs against two San Diego relievers here in the eighth. Scott Cassidy will try and put an end to it against the guy who started the inning, Xavier Nady. And he takes a strike. Nady doubled with two strikes against Scott Linebring to get this whole thing started. Two run homers in the inning by Julio Franco to give the Mets the lead and by Carlos Delgado among the Mets six hits in this inning. And it's 0-2 to Nady. Nady making his return to San Diego and Bruce Bochy not enjoying what he's watching as his bullpen is giving it up. Get a few more gray, gray hairs of that goatee after the night. Floyd at first with two down. Whoa, that got away. One and two to Nady. Scott Cassidy, 30 years old. He's pitching the big leagues with Toronto and Boston. The Padres got him last summer. Grew up in Syracuse and went to Lemoyne College up there. He was a non drafted free agent who's made it to the big leagues. And he strikes out Nady to end the inning, but the Mets send 10 men to bat and they score six runs on six hits. A couple of big blows. Julio Franco becoming the oldest player in Major League history to hit a home run. Aaron Howman takes over the pitching for the Mets as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Mets now with a 7-2 lead as we check out our AOL game summary. Kaz Matsui, an inside the park home run in his first at bat of the season. Carlos Delgado and Julio Franco with two run homers, and the Mets have themselves a 7-2 lead. Yes. On a better high-speed internet, you belong on AOL. Josh Barfield fouls it back. Took him a while to wake up, but boy, oh boy, when they woke up, six run eight. 
And the game really turned in the bottom of the seventh. If you look at Julio Franco. Jack Quinn had been the oldest oldest player in history to hit a home run. A pitcher back in 1930. He was 46. And Franco does him one better. It's a home run at age 47. And you're right. The game did turn back in the seventh with that double play. That great play by Wright in the hole and the pivot by Natsui. And Hammond strikes out Barfield with a changeup. One out and nobody on. Bases were loaded with one out at that time. And there's the changeup out of the strike zone. Barfield swung at two bad pitches in that at bat. The Mets bullpen doing a great tag team job in that seventh inning. Traxel left with two men on. Feliciano gave up a, an infield single to load the bases, or uh, Bradford did, but then Feliciano came on to get Blum to pop up, and Sanchez got the double play. Beautifully turned by Wright and Matsui. And so Sanchez is now pitcher of record on the long side of this 7 2 score. Giles has two of the seven hits for San Diego. 2 0. Aaron Howman pitched yesterday, worked a 1 2 3 ninth inning, and the Mets 2 1 loss. Now making his eighth appearance in the first 15 games. That's diving right into that relief thing again. 2 1. Remember that Howman didn't know until only a couple of days before the season he was going to be relieved. Doug Mirabelli, who took over for Piazza behind the plate, now on deck in the cleanup spot. 2 and 2 to Giles. But Heilman, he had the one bad outing. But other than that, he seems to have not missed a beat going back to the bullpen. He's pitched well, and that first outing was a shaky one for him. He got nobody out, came in on opening day. But he's been steady since. And Giles takes outside 3 and 2. And it just makes that bullpen so much deeper when you have someone like Heilman and then Dwaner Sanchez, both of them to come in to, as your. As your bridge to Billy Wagner. And it's on the outside corner. Strike three call. Giles goes down looking at the fastball. And he lingers to discuss it with C.B. Buckner. Back to back strikeouts for Heilman to start the bottom of the eighth. We'll watch the catcher's glove. See if he tries to bring it back in. Looks like a ball to me, doesn't it? It's Giles. But not to C.B. Buckner. And they're two away. Now the Mets certainly got the benefit of a call in the seventh. It looked like Eric Young had beaten that double play relay to first, but was called out by John Hirschbeck. It kept the Mets behind by just the one run, and then they parlayed that in the top of the eighth, scoring six runs. Here's Mirabelli up for the first time. Bounces one to David Wright. Takes his time and gets the slow footed Mirabelli easily, and it's a quick one, two, three inning for Aaron Howman. We go to the ninth. 7 to 2 New York. Matt Yellow here with a Chevrolet Baseball Night New York update. Red Sox and D Rays and Scott Casimir, the former Mets farmhand, injures himself. Muscle cramps in the left thumb and wrist. D Rays beat the Sox. Casimir with the win. Back to Gary and Keith in San Diego. John Atkins will take over the pitching for San Diego. Pitched the last three years, parts of it anyway, with the Chicago White Sox. Good time to catch up on your knitting when your team is behind seven to two going to the ninth inning. I don't think I've ever brought knitting to the ballpark. You? I've never knitted. <laughs> I have sewed an occasional button on, but hey, that that's almost almost knitting. <laughs> Here's Kaz Matsui has had a big role in his first game of the year, and he drives one to left. Eric Young is right there. One pitch and one retire. Matsui with an inside the park home run and just a ridiculous turn on a double play. Jorge Julio warming up at the Mets bullpen. Wondering with a five run lead, get another inning work with Julio here with a big lead. That's been his role. And I got to believe that Wagner would then, if he really opts to bring in Julio, Wagner will get loose if there's any trouble. Here's what John Atkins has done this year. This is just his second appearance. He was called up about four days ago. Oh. And Jose Valentin takes inside. You, know, you take a pitch like that when you're Valentin, you're 0 for 15, and you wonder, why are they throwing at me? 
Got the elbow out of the way. Valentin still looking for that elusive first hit of the season. Maybe he's an after midnight guy. And he is. He hits one over a short base hit in the left field. So all it took was Pacific time, 12.49 Eastern, and Jose Valentin has his first hit as a New York Med, and that'll prompt a smile. So one out and one on. New Yorkers love a good debate, and Daily News Live will be the place to find one. Gather around the table for fast-paced New York sports talk. Daily News Live weekdays at 5 p.m. on Sportsnet New York. Mets have 11 hits tonight. A big difference after a run on three hits each of the last two games. Look for a while tonight as though they weren't going to get there. Jake Peavy held them in check for seven innings, but the faucet's been turned on now. Just took them a while to kick it in gear. It's the first time they've had an explosion of, of, of offense in quite some time. Reyes swings through that one, looking to hit the Mets' fourth home run of the night. Watch his shoulders. Look at the angle of his shoulders. The same angle of his bat swings right through a pitch. Belt high. If he continues to swing like that, he's going to have a difficult time hitting a pitch belt high and up. He's got to square his shoulders a little more and level off. Loops this one to center. Johnson in. We'll have to play it on a hop. And Valentin goes into second. And Reyes has his second hit of the night. Well, he gets jammed in the breaking ball here. Down and in on towards the end. A little quick. So now two aboard with one out. That's now with eight hits in the last two innings after four hits in the first seven innings. Loduca is 0 for 4. The only starter without a base hit tonight. First and second one out. He takes a slider low from Atkins. 1 and 0. Valentin the runner at second after picking up his first hit of the year and Reyes at first. 7 to 2 New York ninth inning. 1 and 1 to Laduca. Mets trying to go to 11 and 4 on the year. As you look at Andy Chavez on deck. Braves have the night off. Everybody in the division 500 or below other than the Mets. Hit to third. Castilla gets the out at third. Gets the out at first. Double play side retired. 5-5-3 on the double play. We go to the bottom of the ninth in San Diego. Mets seven. Padres two. Mets single game, season plan, and six-pack tickets are on sale now. Lock in the best available seats at Mets.com or call 718-507-TIXX. Seasons and plans include postseason ticket options and single game tickets start at $5. Violence can be used for good. What are you talking about? Justice. V for Vendetta. Rated R. Now playing in theaters and IMAX. It's rally cap time in San Diego. It's Ferd Burfel. And here's why it's rally cap time in San Diego because it's been a two to one game in the seventh inning with the bases loaded. Young's ground ball turned into this 5-4-3 remarkable double play. That yeah, might have been saved first. And then Julio Franco at the top of the eighth becomes the oldest man in history to hit a home run. That gave the Mets the lead, and they were off and running from there. Sixth run eight. And now Jorge Julio will try and finish it off. And this has been his role. He has struggled. Julio has brought him in with big leads. This is a this is a five run lead. Should be able to hold it. He looked good night before last and working a one two three ninth inning with the Mets down by six runs against the Braves. Now asked to finish it off and give Wagner a respite. But at the first sign of trouble, you have to figure Wagner is going to start to loosen up. Adrian Gonzalez leads off the ninth inning for San Diego, and Julio misses with the slider one and zero. 
Gonzalez 0 for 2 and a walk. Two and zero. Oh. Have to throw strikes in this situation. And what's interesting is he's missing low, and Rick Peterson wants him to work the bottom of the strike zone. That's what Rick wants all his pitchers to do. But this is something that doesn't come naturally to Julio. And he's not trying to overthrow that's for sure he's not throwing as hard as he can so he's trying to have him pull back on the on the reins a little bit to get more command there's Rick right there you know, last pitch 93 a far cry from the 98 we've seen Julio throw and that one's bounced to second and Matsui makes the play and Gonzalez retires so a good recovery by Julio after falling behind three and oh got eight gloves out there. So one down in the last of the night and here's Khalil Green. Green is one out of three. We have the base hit. We got the Padres started in that bottom of the seventh when they loaded the bases with nobody out and did not score. Looks like Sean Penn, doesn't he? I'm sorry, he hates that. But he looks like Ridgemont you're, High. You're, you're thinking, you're thinking Spicoli <laughs> from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He looks exactly like him, and he hates that very much. Well, you know, Khalil means gift from God. One and one to Green. Khalil Green's dad was a Marine in Vietnam, and when he came back, he was looking for some meaning to his life and adopted the Baha'i faith. And that's how Khalil got that name. Got it foul, right making the throw, but it's a foul ball. Uh oh. I, Delgado may have got hurt trying to tag there. Comes up limping a little bit. It was a play that was a moot point because the foul ball had already been signaled by both the home plate and third base umpires, and there was no reason for Delgado to try and make a tag. Well, here it is, right here on the throw. He makes the tag. He didn't even hit him. What happened here? Let's see his that. He came down awkwardly. Yes. Seems to be all right. One and two the count to Green. And Julio strikes him out with a slider. And that's the second out. And a good one right here. That is right to the glove. That is a good pitch. He's got good stuff. There's Willie. He's happy. Keep the faith, right? Well, right now Julio's doing exactly what you'd like. That is keep Billy Wagner out of the game. That's if you six pitchers in this game, but avoided using their closer. And that keeps him fresher for tomorrow. There's Billy relaxing, waiting for Julio to get the final out. And Benny Castilla takes a strike. Look at 91 miles an hour. He's let up. He's not trying to throw it through a brick wall. One and one the count to Castilla. Here's the 1 1 pitch, swing and a miss of the slider, and now Julio one strike away from nailing this one down. Mets with a 6 1 eighth inning. Well, there's the slider, and that's expanding the strike zone. It's not starts out knee high outside corner. The 1 2 to Castilla, and he bounces the breaking ball 2 and 2. Big deep breath for Julio. Kind of pulled down a little too hard on that last one. There's been progress, nevertheless, his last two starts. No question. After falling behind 3 0 to the first batter tonight, he's looked great. 2 and 2 to Castilla. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Julio fans Castilla with a slider, and the ball game is over. And the Mets with a terrific come from behind victory in the first game of their 10 game road trip as they score six runs in the eighth inning. Julio Franco hits the home run that makes him the oldest man ever to do so. Kaz Matsui has a terrific return to the major leagues. And the Mets have themselves a victory in San Diego. 
so critical for this team after that disappointing end of the homestand against Atlanta, losing the rubber match and the series. Flying all the way over last night, getting in here late to open up this series, this road trip with a win. So the Met fans on hand, happy with what the Mets accomplished tonight with the six run eighth inning. Once again, our final score. It was the Mets 7 and the Padres 2. Be sure to join us for our next Mets broadcast tomorrow night at 10 o'clock as the Mets again meet the Padres. Coming up next is Nissan Post Game Live.